Do you want to keep the right to freelance in America? If so, you better watch this video. A year ago, I reported on the PRO Act, which reclassified independent contractors as employees. And it passed the House, but it never was put up to a vote in the Senate. Why? Well, the Senate passed it over to the Labor Department to figure out what to do with it. And recently, the U.S. Labor Department announced what they're going to do. So what we haven't known over the past year is that the cronies in Washington have been working behind the scenes to push the PRO Act through without Congress. So how are they doing that? Through the Department of Labor, one of several hundred agencies and department that the government uses to overstep our republic and legislation. Last week, the Wage and Hour Division of the government released a proposal to change the rules for what classifies a person as an employee versus a freelancer. And so this is the PRO Act, but instead of going through Congress to become an act so that people can shut it down through our representatives, they've gone through a government department that controls labor rules. So through the Fair Labor Standards Act, they propose a change to the rules rather than through legislation because making laws is too slow that's for free countries <laughs> the elites want to strip away every last freedom that our country models to the rest of the world they don't want you to freelance because it means less power and control for them employees are under very tight control from the federal government there are now 70 million freelancers in the u.s 36 percent of the workforce are now independent contractors so the government is getting very scared that so many people have a say in how they work and where they work and how much they earn. So in the description below, there's a link to the actual text on this new rule, and it's really just the PRO Act, but it's being pushed through as an executive rule through the Labor Department instead of through Congress. So in the link below, make you can make a public comment before November 28th. So please express your disdain for this new rule that they're trying to push through. The reason why you need to look into this is because if you're currently an independent contractor and you're supporting your family freelancing or you're just doing it part-time and you're trying to build up a side hustle, your ability to do this is now threatened because your client might have to make you an employee just to work with you. And they're not gonna do that because if you're only putting in a few hours a week for them, they can't make you an employee, which means you just lose them as a client. This is exactly what happened in California two years ago when they enacted AB5. And that law, something I also reported on in another video, was absolutely devastating to all the freelancers in California. They're now trying to do this on a national level. Now, if this goes through, there is one way that you can continue to work as a freelancer. And that is if you have an official business entity, like an LLC or a corporation. And when you have a client, you're forming a contract between their business in your business opposed to you working for them as an independent contractor it's a different type of contract i always recommend that you form at least an llc anyways because there are a lot of risks with combining your personal and business finances so if you've watched any of my other videos i've always recommended that you don't just work as an independent contractor where you get 1099s and where you share your social security number when you fill out a w-9 instead you are sharing an EIN number for your business entity, and really you're just forming contracts between your business and your client's business. That is how you can get around this uh, rule if it does get into place. And if you're really trying to support a family freelancing anyways, you, you know your whole goal is to do this full time, you really need to have a business entity anyways. Even if it's just you working independently and you don't have employees, you really should have an LLC. You don't have to have a whole team of people and this huge business to form a business entity. It's really just to separate your business finances from your personal finances, which is what you should be doing anyways. So figure out a business name, form a business entity, get some legal help to set, that it's, to set it up properly. It's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but it will save you a lot of money down the road. And it will ensure that you continue to have the freedom to freelance. I put that in air quotes because if you have a business entity, According to the government, you're not considered an independent contractor. Now, on your taxes, you're still going to be considered self-employed if you're just paying yourself through an LLC and you know doing owner draws, and I won't get into the details of that. But you can be self-employed and still work with your clients through a business entity, 
and still not be considered an independent contractor. Now, I don't usually get political in my videos because I massively disagree with the two-party system. I am not loyal to the Republican or the Democratic Party. I'm loyal to God, my wife, my children, and true principles. But to make it very clear who's behind this onslaught to freelancers, it has largely come from the Democrats. They have historically been very cynical of small business. They like larger governments. They like more centralized control. Now, there are Republicans in Congress that also support this new rule because they don't have a spine, but this is coming straight from the Biden administration very aggressively. So you need to think very deeply about what you really believe if you're a freelancer. You as a freelancer literally represent the free market. You represent capitalism in its simplest form. So if you don't believe in the free market, if you don't believe in capitalism, then you, you really shouldn't be freelancing. Because to be a successful freelancer, you have to understand these economic principles that allow you the freedom to build up a small business. You cannot support politicians who are against small business, who are against freelancing. So again, this rule that they're trying to push through is very devastating. It's the national version of the AB5 law that went into effect in California and was reintroduced in 2020, 2021, and it has hurt so many small businesses and freelancers in California. Now, you're going to hear things like this. Oh, this is going to make this this rule is going to make things more fair so businesses don't have competitive advantage by misclassifying employees. Yeah, you're going to be fed all sorts of bull about what this thing is and how it's going to create more fairness. The only way that business can be fair is for the government to stay out of it. The very nature of the free market being free from government control produces fairness automatically, naturally. There is equal opportunity for every business to compete as they see fit and to grow when the government stays out of the free market. And the funny thing is the types of companies they keep referring to when it comes to this rule when it came to the PRO Act last year is things like ride sharing companies, Uber, where, uh, you know, it's mostly freelancers driving their cars and they don't do anything else. They're not getting other clients. They just work for this one company. Now, I don't recommend you pursuing that as a freelance career because it kind of defeats the whole point, right? A freelancing is to d diversify your income amongst multiple clients. And if you're only working for one client full time, like you're not really a freelancer, but you have some freedoms being an independent contractor. Um, I don't re recommend pursuing that type of freelance career anyways. But the funny thing is in California, when they passed their version of this law, those rideshare companies ended up being excluded because of lobbying interests, because of money that was handed to them, even though they were the original reason why they came up with the law to begin with, so it ended up hurting everyone else. Overall, families right now are being crushed by inflation, and freelancing is one of the few ways that you can rise above that because you can raise your income much quicker than you can in a government-controlled employee job. And then they have the audacity to come out with something like this that would force more families into poverty. If you want socialism and poverty for all, by all means, move to Cuba, move to Venezuela. That has no place here. And as a freelancer, you better be out there defending the free market and capitalism if you want any chance in retaining your freedom to work how you want, to support your family in a way that allows you to have the work-life balance that you and your family deserve. So go and click on the link below, go and make a public comment, make your voice heard, and make sure you let every other freelancer you know about this, and not even freelancers, anybody you know should be against this because ultimately it will hurt the economy, it will hurt small business, and it will affect everyone negatively. That's it for today.